Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and in this video I want to talk about are you worried about the security of your APIs? Now this is a question which is usually less asked and the reasons are simple. Nobody cares about the security until unless there is an incident that happens. Now same happened with the Uber incident as well. In the Uber, you might have noticed that the moment the Uber incident and the Uber fiasco that came out after their Slack and everything got compromised, Uber actually posted out so many of the LinkedIn jobs just to revolve around the security. So security is one such subject which is talked less, but the moment the incident happens, it's being talked a lot. Now, it's not your fault. Uh, the security is the last point which is usually covered. And especially I've also noticed and have experienced this that when you're learning as a beginner, you are much more worried about how to do this, rather how to secure it. Because if you really don't know how to do it, what you are going to secure at all. So in the initial phase when you're learning how to actually create a login flow, how to write the bearer token, there are a lot of things which are ignored deliberately so that you don't focus too much on there. And I really say that you should focus on them once you have done the basics of how to create a login flow. Just to give you an example, there is a login flow, but you are not rate limiting how much of the token should be generated. Somebody might just come into and keep on sending you the request of create a new account, create a new account, create a new account. And every time if you are sending him a bearer token, it might overwhelm your server. Now, this is just one incident. There are also known vulnerabilities, especially the OWASP top 10 or also known as OWASP top 10. So common things like SQL injections, injection happens in the MongoDB as well. Sometimes somebody might send a parameters of greater than, less than, or might, some extra or might extract some values from your database. So are you worried about them? Not at all. Through this video, I want to make sure that everybody focuses a little bit on the security because this is something that you need to understand after learning the things when you are building your products. Now, over the years, we have built many products. Some has been successful, some has been in between and some failed badly. The market fit was not there. The one which got out in the market, they are handling a huge, huge responsibility. And obviously we test them out a lot. But the problem that we faced is that when a beginner or a fresher is getting hired, he might be good in writing the APIs or the controllers and all these things. Endpoints are great, but he's not much aware about writing the security test. Obviously, the testing needs to be done by the test engineer and he's going to write the test for him. But the basic test, obviously the functional test, you obviously write it. But there is nobody, even the people who are in the testing domain, they are in the testing, not the security testing. So the test they doubt is, right is automation and all these tests. So we were looking for a solution for, on the, for one of the product that we will be releasing soon in the quarter of this uh, year is we have written all the controllers, we have written the test cases, but I really wanted to test a little bit more about the security of the product. And that's where you might have noticed I shared this badge on the LinkedIn as well that, hey, I got this badge. And that's where I know came to know about this free community product. Uh, again, this is absolutely free. You can just go ahead and try this out. I'll walk you through the walkthrough tutorial of how to try this out. And even in this community edition, they give you so much of the test that you can do. That is what I loved about it. Surely, obviously, they will eventually come up with their uh, non-community edition as well. But I think this is a very, very generous community edition. And there is nothing that you have to do. It's all baked in into the Postman. You just integrate it and that's it. Click on a button. That's, that's all it is simple, super simple. So uh, I will definitely talk more about the security concerns and why you should be worried more about this. But this video I've kept specially uh, so that I can walk you through that how you can at least run all of the APIs that you have built through this basic test so that at least some security can be punched in. So now let me take you on my computer screen as segment two of this video, where I'll walk you through step-by-step guide of how at least you can protect your APIs a little bit, a little bit. Like there's a lot you can protect, but at least you can get started into the security journey of API security. One thing, one advice before we move there, be worried about the security. When I was into penetration testing, I enjoyed a lot getting into other people's system. And as a developer right now, I also see that there might be somebody who might enjoy the same joy that I used to have of breaking into other people's system, uh, of course, ethically, but there is somebody out there. So always, always be a little bit panicked about the security issues. Okay, enough of the guidance. Now let me walk you through the tutorial so that you can also uh, run all of these tests into your APIs. Let's walk you through there. 
So in this portion of the video, I'll ask you to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's come back. In this portion of the video, I'll walk you through that how you can set up Pint and can at least run the basic test on your application or the APIs that you have created. Now that you understand that security is really important, I really like that how this product is evolving and they are providing a community edition, just like the JetBrains provide the community edition of their product and a couple of other companies as well. They also provide a community edition so that whatever the application you are building, maybe there's just a login flow in that, or maybe just a few controllers, you at least can run your application through these uh, security tests, the basic ones, and not just basics, they are uh, pretty huge. They actually saves you from the OS uh, top 10 vulnerability. So you can run your entire collection through that. And I hope you are already using Postman. I teach Postman in all of my courses. And uh, so let's just walk you through that, how you can actually do that. This will be done in a little bit of a reverse order because writing and actually running this test takes a lot of time. So I'll first show you how it looks like when you actually completely run it, then I'll remove everything and we'll do it again in front of you so that you can understand how this is all gonna happen, okay? So uh, first of all, it's really important that you understand your, the workflow of the Pint, how it can be integrated in your application. Right now, you run your functional test through the Postman or through your other scripts and you directly target the application that this is what we are building. All you have to do in this case is grab a Docker image from the Pint Keep it running in your system. They have written all the code and the test cases that needs to be run through any given application because it's a security test. So a lot of tests need to be passed down. For example, uh, somebody might be overusing your API. So you need to set a rate limit on that. Somebody might be passing some SQL injection in that and might be extracting some database information from that. So there are these common tests. It doesn't really matter whether you are building an application and what's the business logic. These are security tests. So Pint actually gets in between those tests and just automates everything in there. You'll understand that in a little bit more when I'll walk you through that how this is being done. So first, let me open up the Postman and show you that we actually ran the test on a couple of applications, but in this one, I'll show you that so that you can replicate everything. This is all you can do in your system as well. I highly recommend you to follow along. So this is the Pint and this is how the tests are going to look like. And you click on the All Test, uh, it took a lot of time. So you can see the number of tests that they are going through. Yes, this is a lot of scroll bars and this is all in the community edition. So you'll see that this is all being done. And this takes that five tests had been failed, like JWT hashed without secret. So a lot of new developers might not be uh, familiar with these kinds of vulnerabilities that are available there and the data leakage. So they can now go ahead change their code, how it is being written, and can update and run these tests again. Obviously, this is going to take a little bit time. So uh, this is how it looks like. And once you actually reach to this position, I'll show you how you can reach it up here. Just click on the show report, and I'll walk you through what this is and importance of this one. Just click on the send, and it will actually get you this kind of a values. You can preview this right up here, and this is how the result look like. So what has been failed, what test case has been failed. And so entire report is being generated. You can actually save this response of the report and that's it. Your security testing has been uh, done and performed. Okay. But now the bigger picture is how can we reach at this point? Because right now this is all set up, but we want to do it from the start. So for that, I'll just remove everything. We'll walk you through again how to do it. So right click on this one or just left click, my bad, left click, and we'll just delete this. Uh, I know I'm removing all the responses and the goat that I borrowed from them is also going to be deleted. Now these collections, LCO Auth app and the t-shirt are from other tutorials and the courses that we walk through. So we are gonna, not going to be bothered too much about that. Okay. For this, you cannot actually just go ahead and work with the Postman in a non-logged in mode. You need to log in into Postman. I'm pretty sure you have created your account. And also you're going to need that the Docker should be up and running. So if I open up my Docker dashboard, you'll see that this is up and running. And how to grab this, I'll walk you through. Just go ahead, download the Docker and install it. That's all it takes. Just right click next, next, I agree. And okay, all of that, that's all. How to grab all these images and everything. Don't worry, I'll walk you through step by step. All right. So first and foremost, go up into pint.io. Really nice name. It reminds me of something with the pint. Uh, just click on run in the postman. And obviously you have to sign up. So I'll just sign up with my Google. It takes a little bit of time and you can see Amazon Cognito. So a nice service there. Now what you have to do is actually, these are the two things. This goat is a sample application. Maybe for the very first test, you don't want to involve your actual application. 
Uh, so you want to go through with a test application. So they provide you a test application and the pint is actually the whole testing source code. Yeah, you get the idea. So first let's grab this sample application. So just click on this view more action. And what you really want to do is simply just fork this application. So create a fork. So I'll just click on this and uh, we'll click on this and we'll click on, hey, I want to create a fork. Now, this is going to create a fork. Uh, I'll call this one as simply Hitesh Chaudhary's fork in my workspace. There might be multiple workspaces in your Postman. So go ahead and watch for this. I'll create a fork collection. The moment you just click on it, I go back to Postman and you'll see that the goat is being replicated. This is all happening because I'm also logged in into my Postman. Make sure you are also. Then go back and let's go ahead and click back because we want to grab the real meat part, which is pint. So just click on this. Actually, first uh, click on the pint and then click up here and just click on create a fork. I'll just name it same. Did I click it? Yes, clicked it. My browser is a little slow. It happens sometimes. I'll just click on fork the collection. And this will give me up here in the in browser, but uh, it is not recommended that you run all of these things in browser. Go to the Postman client that you have. Now you have pint and you have goat. Now, one of the things that you should look out for is click on the pint and click on this icon. So it might be closed for you. So this icon is for documentation. I'm pretty sure you know how to use and travel around the Postman. If not, let me know in the comments. I'll make a dedicated tutorial for you on how to utilize the Postman. What are the common areas you should be looking up for? The best thing about the Pint is they give you inbuilt documentation within the Postman so that you don't have to worry too much. But since you're watching the tutorial, let me cut it through. Just click on the Pint and then you have to click on variables. And these are the things that you have to fill up. The Pint port, which is 5001, the API key and the collection ID. But before that, since there is a suite of tests, it doesn't come directly up here. Although you can see some of the tests, for example, uh, maybe you want to see access data exposure or something. So you'll find in the test, uh, there are some code written, but the majority of the collection happens through the Docker. Uh, but the question is that from where to get the Docker? So just click up here, go on to the prerequisite, first grab the Docker. So that is the one thing, so get started. So this is how you get the Docker. So just click and copy all of this till it says latest. So automatically you always get the latest of the image in the pine. So make sure you always and always grab the latest. It's a community edition, free stuff. So grab the latest one, copy that and bring up your terminal and just paste it up here. Simple command. Notice here it runs on port 5001. Just click on enter. My image is already up and running. So it will say, hey, errors and all of that, obviously. Uh, that's exactly the image that you saw in my dashboard. And uh, make sure this image is up and running. Uh, I don't want to keep on running this one, so I'll just delete this one. I sh this is just for a demo for you. This is already running since 43 minutes. And this is all you need. Now, coming up to the big question, uh, where will I get the other variables like API key and your collection ID? API key is super simple. Again, click on the documentation. And when you will click on here, you'll find a direct link, which is postman.co slash setting slash me slash API key. This key is getting generated from your own Postman account that you created. So it will ask you that login. I logged in from my email on this particular video. So I'll just click on this. Take will take some time. And here in the API keys, uh, I'll just remove this API key. Uh, probably you don't have any. So just click on generate API key and I'll name this one as, of course, Pint because this is being used there and just click copy to clipboard. That's all, that's all it takes. And just paste this API key up here. There we go. Now, one more thing that's remaining is collection ID uh, or your collection name. So you might be having multiple collection. You work on various projects. So I'll click on the goat. And uh, once you click on this, make sure you click on these three tiny dots and click on edit. And here on the right hand side, you see your collection ID. That's it. Any collection that you have, that's how you grab the ID. This is showing that here is my Postman collection and unique ID of it so that it doesn't create any problem. I'll go back to the pint and we'll go back here. So collection ID, paste that. Do not, I repeat it again, do not touch this scan ID because this is being used internally by the pint. So uh, when you click on something like show report uh, and you see this variable being passed on as a query parameter, Yes, this is exactly the scan ID that they use. So this is for internal. We don't have to touch this one. Uh, the most important thing is to save it, which a lot of people forget. So make sure you don't forget that. 
you save it. And now you'll notice that if I open this GOAT application, first user login, this is actually a working healthy application. Not healthy, that's the wrong choice of word. If I click on this, it sends a query and give me a bearer token. Of course, a JWT token is being sent to me. So this is a full-fledged application, just like what you will be building up. And then all you have to do is click on the pint, make sure it is saved, mine is saved. Click on it and then click on run collection. Once you click on run collection, make sure you open up this advanced section and I want to really save the response. So I always click on that. And then I want to go through with one iteration and notice how many of the checks are being done for free for you, like injection, OWASP top 10, OWASP, however you call that. And then there is also lack of resources, broken functional level authorization, uh, broken user level authentication. And uh, there was some interesting ones as well, which I saw. Uh, yeah, here it is. Server side request forgery. So uh, this is one of the most notorious hack that comes around all the time. Just click on this and click on run pint. And if your Docker image is up, it will check that, that the Docker image is up. Then it will start automated security test. Now this, you have to be patient. It is going to take some time. Took me around like 10-ish minute, a little bit less or here and there. But this is how you can test it. So now you know how to test your application. So go ahead, whatever you have learned in the other tutorials from my courses or anywhere, at least make sure you run your code with the free or the community edition of the testing suite so that at least you know that the basic hacks cannot be done uh, when you are writing the API. This is one of the most crucial thing and at least give it a try. So uh, it will take some time. That's why I showed you. First, I'll show you the results and then I'll walk you through. Uh, if you'll go on to the website of uh, Pint and uh, here's the documentation. Yes, I studied and read everything from here. It's not like I know everything all the time. Uh, I'll go for again uh, for the website pint.io. Nice, cool name. You can see a sample report just like I showed you, uh, almost similar to that they also give you. So you can try and test this out. And yes, this is the same badge that I got from them uh, and I posted on LinkedIn as well. You can also show off a little that yes, I am an ambassador and I care about the security. So that's all you can do. And here we go. This actually takes time. You need to be really, really patient about this. It is doing things in the background and depends on a little bit load and stuff like that. But yeah, it will do this stuff. So just like I, what I showed you. So this is all about running the pint and I highly recommend that you at least test out your API so that the common vulnerabilities are not there, especially when you are a beginner getting started in the world of writing APIs. It is important that not only you just run the common tests like feature test, integration test and all of that, you also run it through the security test. It is a good practice and I uh, hope you enjoy that. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll surely catch you up in the next one.